Okay, another new Tyranid model to check out and have fun putting together. Dragging out the screws and breaking out the wire cutters. I clipped all the parts off to get a nice pile of plastic. There were some very minor mold lines that were easily scraped away with an exacto, held at a right angle or about that, and just drag it on. Now, the instruction booklet isn't that helpful at the outset. The body is a little awkward to put together, and the photo isn't at the best of angles to help you see what you need to do. But eventually, I saw a small dome and a corresponding pit that it's supposed to go in, and this helped a lot. Okay, the head assembles much more easily, and then in go the long spindly arms and the rest of the tail. And again, another posing pinnacle that it is curled around. I hope Games Workshop will lay off of this. With the Norn Emissary, I could get away with ditching the massive platform it's supposed to vogue on, but like the Broodlord, this one is quintessential to the build. You have to use it. I don't know, I'd like the option of having uniform basing and the choice of using the fancy posing platform or not. Also, I didn't realise from the instructions and the cover that one of the tentacles actually emerges from the back of its head. Yep, right out of the brain itself, sort of like a reverse from beyond. Anyway, a blast of Chaos Black Primer and then on to painting. First up, the Prang Blue, a comprehensive layer all over the skin. And then some Zeruse Purple on the chitin plates of the torso, the limbs and the carapace that encompasses the head. And once dry, a wash of Nuln Oil over the whole thing. In rig blue dry, load up the brush and paint the claws and the towel tip and the feeder tendrils, getting a solid area of blue and then with the dregs some light swipes across the ribs and along the limbs to get some nice accents on the contours and ridges. Ethereum blue dry and the same thing just more restrained, painting it to the tips of the claws and tails and with a lighter dry brush across the limbs and body. Gene Stealer purple to dry brush the chitin. And this also overrides those little areas where my blue dry brushing got a little reckless and accidentally got on the Zeruse purple. Right, white scar, painting the exposed areas of brain and the long cranial tentacle. The box has it painted like the other limbs, but I want it to be something else, like an antenna. The terror it innately radiates is broadcast from this tendril that is rooted directly in its neural nodes, so it has the same bioluminescent glow as the brain. Now, if I end up working on another of these, I'd lay off adding the head carapace until the last minute because it's such a wriggly fellow that there's a stretch of brain that is really tough to access when it's assembled. Without the carapace, it'd be a doddle to paint the whole brain, but with it on, it's a really tricky spot to get to. Okay. Lives and learns, don't ya? Right, nihilic oxide on all the areas of white scar. It's nice and watery, so it settles in the grooves and troughs, leaving the ridges and peaks with less coverage. So I get my nice phosphorescent effect, which I accentuate with a very delicate dry brush of white scar, focusing on the tentacle tip and a few swipes across the dome of the brain. And again, this would have been a lot easier if the carapace hadn't been glued into position. I could have done some quick and easy dry brushing, and then at this stage, adding the chitin armor would have made the whole thing less stressful. You look a little stressed. Oh, I'm stressed. <laughs> Anywho, Elmer's glue painted around the base and also up the posing pinnacle to conceal most of it, and then sprinkle on the small weld slate and stone and leave it to dry totally, before giving the model a blast of varnish to protect the paint job and lock in the gravel. So here we have a Neuro Lictor, a development of the Ghastly Lictor, and this new bioform has been granted powerful projected neural powers by the hive mind. While the Death Leaper inspires an aura of dread, the Neuro Lictor radiates a distinct psychic wave that sows absolute terror in all within its vicinity, weakening the will to fight, causing doubt and promoting flight. Other Tyranids are not only unaffected by this disruption, but are invigorated and inspired by it, their claws and fangs biting deeper into those whose confidence has been cracked by the Neurolictor's nightmarish abilities. 
This wave of tremulous fright also affects the senses of the prey, obscuring this creature from view, allowing it to operate unseen until the moment it pounces to commit to the kill. For this purpose, the Neurolictor is admirably prepared with claws and talons that can pierce even the toughest armor, and a deluge of such attacks can fell even the most stalwart target. As an expert and perfectly adapted assassin, when it brings down its victim, its feeder tendrils can drill into the cranial vault, slipping in through every orifice or boring directly through bone to devour the organ within, digesting not only the tissue, but the very data contained within. By feasting on the brain, the Neurolictor harvests every secret, every plan, broadcasting it at a hive mind so that it may develop new tactics to help the swarm overwhelm its adversaries and serve them up as fresh biomass for conversion into even more abominations to serve the voracious appetite of the Great Devourer.